Here we have the 2016 Honda Civic RS. Today I'm going to show you around this car and I'm also going to give it a test drive. But before that, please don't forget to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see more car reviews. So first I'll show you around the Civic rs now if you saw my type r civic fk8 the one that is based on this i said that it looks very similar to a regular civic which it actually is especially to the rs you got a nice blacked out grill right here of course it doesn't have the cool looking bumper with all the vents in it but at least it also has the same pretty same looking uh, lights led lights and you even have this ridge right here which looks pretty cool as you move on over here to the side first thing you'll notice here is that here at the side of the fender that's kind of weird i haven't seen any car have this usually there's a signal light over here but for this one it's right here that's that's pretty odd i've never seen any car with that as you go on down to the rims the rims are pretty nice they're two-tone black and silver and they're wrapped in uh, dunlop lm704 in 215 as you move on over to the side what you'll notice here is that the car is actually pretty low it's a uh, it's below my shoulder level and I'm only 5'6". It has this nice sloping roof line. It looks pretty much like a coupe. You got this nice quarter panel that's kind of small, which again aids to that look. Although headroom might be a bit sacrificed because of that. Down here, you got a nice line and it even dips like that right here. So here at the back of the Civic RS, the first thing you'll notice here at the back is the spoiler right here. Now it's just low, it's not very ricery. And this is something that the 1.8 non-turbo doesn't have. Aside from that, you got these nice light extenders over here. You got a third brake light over here. And of course, you have your RS Turbo badge. As you open it up, just here in the middle, this one lifts up. And over here inside, you got a trunk that's a decent size. It's still kind of big. What's good about this is that uh, at this price point, I didn't expect 60 fold the rear folding seats. But at least you have it here. You just pull this down and those fold. Now over here, if you lift this one up, this is quite thin, oddly, usually it's pretty thick, right? But at least you have a donut spare tire. Now you'd say, oh, of course, uh, you're gonna have donut spare tire. Yes, but you know, some cars don't even have that. Some cars only have like tire sealants. You got a complete set of tools right here. It's still there. And that's pretty much it here at the back. Close that one up. You don't have any handle right here. So you just have to grab it by the trunk to close it. So under the hood of the Civic RS, since this is the RS variant, you're greeted with a 1.5 liter Earth Dreams VTEC turbo engine. That this one has a healthy 173 horsepower PS and 220 newton meters of torque. Now this one, it doesn't have anything fancy. You don't have hood struts on it, but at least you have a hood pad over here. And this is the stand you have. And that's pretty much it. What I like about this is that there's no cover on the engine, so you can easily play around with it if you want to, which is what a lot of Civic owners actually do. Entering the front of the Civic RS, you have a keyless entry, so you touch here, unlocks, open it up. And the first thing you'll notice here is just how nice the seats are. There's so much stitching, it's nice and real leather looking, although I'm pretty sure that this isn't real leather. So as you move on down here, you can see that you have uh, power seats, but it's only for uh, front back and the seat back too. You don't have lumbar support. You can't even uh, adjust your thigh support, which is normal for a car at this price point. So let's go and move on in. Let's check if the door has a nice thud to it. Not exactly. It's very Japanese car sounding. Okay, let's go and start it up. So foot on the brake, then you just press here. And as you can see, the uh, temperature gauge it sweeps up and same thing with the fuel gauge and uh, your digital instrument cluster looks pretty nice too. And now it's saying keyless or moment battery low, so I've got to change that soon. Okay, now let's go and turn on the AC. Now while turning on the AC in this car is quite simple, you can just press on or off right here. You got a physical button and you can also change the uh, temperature dual zone by the way the problem is that if you want to change your fan speed you can't do that with any physical button so the only way to do that is you press climate and then over here that's when you can like select but it's all in this uh, Android screen but what's good about the Android screen you can actually uh, how do we do that oh it's still initializing so it's a bit slow there we go now that it has initialized oh no and go back to home and you can click here for the applications 
you can actually like download a bunch of stuff and you even have your browser so as long as the uh, car is in uh, park like park plus the parking brake you can access this one so you got a browser over here as long as you're probably tethered to your phone that'll work so go back out okay now the steering wheel it's very similar to even the past Civic steering wheel wherein you got a vinyl it's supposed to be leather I suppose but I'm pretty sure it really is vinyl and it feels like vinyl too it doesn't feel like real leather at least you got stitching all around it over here you can adjust your volume so over here uh, this is, you can also click it or down like that and it'll reflect over there that's a bit of a struggle when you're driving though so that's gonna be an issue okay uh, you can also like change here and what's cool about this is that if you press this one as you can see then I switch you can actually go to where is that your turbo boost gauge so when you drive along and the turbo kicks in that'll actually like show up red like that it's a pretty neat trick you have uh, automatic windows but they're only automatic for the two at the front power lock same thing usual thing uh, just your side mirrors nothing spectacular here at the center you got an economy mode you got your brake hold and your electronic parking brake so no handbrake turns on this one you got park reverse neutral drive usual stuff but what's kind of annoying is that the sport s mode it's just it's just all vertical so if you just uh, if you're in a rush and you want to go to drive once you pull this down sometimes it slips down to s uh, i've done it a couple of times right from here whoop, go straight to s it doesn't kind of like stop or you don't have to like move it a little bit more it's kind of annoying you're at the center as expected it's very similar to the type r fk8 so this one moves like that your armrest if you lift this up this is actually very very big and deep space right here you got a cup holder over here it's pretty large same thing over here it's also pretty large close that one up and then let's go on and check the back i think the back of the civic rs first thing you'll see here is that the seats are also very nice the leather on it or at least the fake leather looks very nice and as you climb on in let's go and check the of the door it's very similar to your front it's not exactly the best now legroom is uh, pretty pretty great especially for a car this size and at this price point i'm only five six but even if you're six feet tall and you're driving behind your own driving position i'm quite sure that there's no problem at all over here at the side uh you don't have soft touch it's just all hard touch over here but at least it's uh soft touch here and soft touch here the front part by the way is soft touch together with the dashboard and get to mention that earlier but this one is just hard touch now the uh center tunnel it's uh it's all right it's not super high you can kind of put your feet there if you have small feet but not me i can't put it there but at least the uh, the footwell on either side they're quite big so you wouldn't exactly uh fight over foot space with those beside you and the car is decently wide so fitting three people in here is fine now here at the center what other gadgets do you have nothing at all you just have your uh armrest over here it folds down and you have two cup holders that's it no reclining seats no anything that's fine for a car this price point so driving the 2016 honda civic rs turbo now the first thing you'll notice with this car is uh, despite it being a civic and civic are known to be cars that you're supposed to drive a bit faster it's actually quite comfortable in here like i expected it to ride a bit harsher similar to the type r but uh, of course i don't expect it to be as bad riding as a type r but i didn't expect it to ride this well as well I thought that it'll ride way harsher than say an Altis, which is its main competitor. But I'm pleased to say that it's quite comfortable too. Now if you want to do corners fast with this car, ooh, that's so much wheel spin and this car is very fun. <laughs> you can really take it out if you want to race this thing. A lot of people mod this and you surely can. This car is definitely on the faster side. So right now I put the car in the S mode, the sport mode, and I'm just going to floor it and that takes off that really takes off pretty fast especially for a car at this price point this car is rapid now in the uh, spec sheet it says that this car 
has a max power at 5,500 RPM. But the way I feel it, 1,000 to 2,000, nothing that's normal. As a revs build, you get turbo boost, 3,000 roughly, the turbo is there. And then there's gonna be a dead spot at around four to 5,000. And then after that, of course, VTEC kicks in, yo, and then uh, we get power again. So it's like you go back and have a separate rev band. That's the thing about VTEC cars, it's pretty cool. Despite this car being front wheel drive, I am very much pleased to say that despite also 170 horsepower and 220 newton meters of torque, this car has no torque steer at all. I've been flooring this for a lot of times now. And uh, although there's wheel spin sometimes, I have never once gotten torque steer. Most of the time, I absolutely hate cars with CVT transmissions. They just feel so mushy. Now, automatic transmissions are supposed to be slush boxes, but CVT is just a different animal in a bad way. It's just very, very bad. It's so, uh, it feels like a bad, which it is. But in this car, I actually enjoy the transmission in this car. It doesn't feel like it's constantly shifting gears. It's not trying hard to simulate gears. It just works. It just works and it has its power delivery done very, very well. Now this car has an economy mode and what economy mode does is pretty much just kind of put your throttle uh, to be less responsive. Now the economy mode in this car for me feels like the normal mode in most cars and the normal mode in this car feels like most cars power mode. The throttle is just a bit, bit, bit too jerky in normal mode. And uh, it's not exactly the most pleasant in the city streets. So most of the time, it's best to just keep this car in economy mode. That way it's smoother. Now, one thing I hate about this car is the uh, climate control switch. So it doesn't have any physical climate control switch aside from the on off, the recirculate and the defoggers. And the only way you can actually switch your fan is uh, you gotta click climate over here, then you have to go into your infotainment and click it on a screen, which is a bit hard when you're driving fast and you just want to suddenly turn down the AC or turn it up a little. And also, on a similar note, the uh, volume adjustment knob uh, on the screen itself, it's also touch thing. So there's no tactile feedback at all. Same thing with the one on the steering wheel, on the multifunction steering wheel. You can uh, swipe it up and down and there will be feedback showing up on your instrument cluster about the volume going up and down. Or you can uh, also press plus or minus, but it's uh, one by one and it's just not like a twist thing or anything like that. And it's just a bit too distracting for me if I still have to look down and see that my audio is actually increasing. Especially if it's just like, you know, one or two and you can't really hear the difference. Visibility in this car, it's not bad. Your A pillars is a bit thick, plus your speakers, so that does impede into your visibility a little bit. But you have a nice big windshield up front. Over here at the sides, your windows are pretty big. But there is your rear windshield, which is uh, coupe-like in terms of size. But not to worry, you have a reverse camera on this car, which not only is clear and bright, but it also swivels, which is uh, pleasant for a car at this price point. You don't have reverse sensors though, but the, the camera is more than good enough. If you like this video, please don't forget to smash a like button for the YouTube algorithm. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see more car reviews.